The Hachita is an interesting prototype frame from Money Bikes. Its biggest value proposition is that it's trying to be the most compatible bike on the market, which is pretty noble in a world of increasing incompatibility. This is a frame set in theory, which you can walk into your local bike co-op, scavenge for parts, and then come out with a complete bike a couple hours later. One of the interesting features of this bike is that it's designed to take both disc brakes and rim brakes and more importantly, rim brakes of various wheel sizes. So the frame has these adjustable plates, which you can uh, position in different orientations, moving the canty stud up and down. And it should, in theory, take 700C, 650B, and 26 inch wheels. In this video, I'm gonna build it up from my own personal parts bin, uh, maybe one or two new components, but otherwise in the spirit of that perfect co-op slash uh, post-apocalyptic bike where we'll all be harvesting for parts. For the front of the bike, I went with the affordable and functional Velo Orange headset. Uh, it's an inch and eighth cartridge bearing. And the thing I love about it the most, which I wish more headsets did, is that the race that you put on the fork uh, is split. So you don't need that big whacking tool to get it on there. Just one less tool the home uh, mechanic has to buy. The cups went on as usual. Uh, I tried this new kind of DIY headset tool from Rivendell and it worked pretty well. I was successful in getting the bottom cup on, but the upper cup was problematic. It kept moving and wouldn't go in straight. So I had to bring it into a local bike shop to get it the rest of the way on. Thank you, Hellgate Cycles in Missoula. For the shifters, I went Neo old school with these die comp uh, down tube shifters. If you notice that the right shifter has an oversized barrel, so it will pull enough cable pull for modern rear derailleurs. It's essentially the same uh, shift lever that's going to go on our Uno bar end shifter. These are friction and have a ratchet. So it's if you're a friction shifting connoisseur, this is about as good as it gets. And what I love about this is that it's shifting at its most basic. There's no black box, no hidden voodoo. Uh, you literally move the lever, it pulls some cable and it moves the rear derailleur. In this case, a modern SRAM GX uh, one by rear derailleur even. Let's talk about the drivetrain for the cranks and the derailleur. I decided to go one by for expediency's sake. I harvested the crank and the bottom bracket uh, and the derailleur from the Crestman bore that I took down to California. So this drivetrain is gonna look very familiar. If this were going to be a long-term personal bike, I would definitely run it 2X. I considered it, but I did run into a bit of a hiccup. Uh, the bike has an oversized seat tube. The idea is that this provides a lot of stiffness. So when you've got a load on there, the, the bike isn't all uh, wobbly. However, this did rule out the vintage Suntour front derailleur I was gonna put on there because the clamp wasn't big enough. The cassette is a Dior uh, 51 tooth 11 speed cassette harvested from the crust. Uh, the, the rear derailleur is a SRAM Eagle GX 11 to 12 speed running 11 speed in this case. The crank is a GRX one by crank, which I've now, I think I've moved between like three different bikes. For wheels and brakes, this is where things got a little bit weird and I had to get creative. For the rear brake, I went with the Paul Touring Cantilever. I was gonna use some more vintage Diacomp uh, levers, but the hardware was interfering with the plate. Uh, so although it's great in theory, there are a couple kinks that have to be worked out, but the Paul Touring Canties worked great. I did a video a while ago comparing all the Paul rim brakes and the Paul Touring Canty uh, was by far my favorite in terms of pure stopping power as well as modulation. They do take a little bit of time to set up, but I have a whole video on how to set up can cantilevers correctly. That meant that the accompanying wheel in the rear, of course, had to be a rim brake wheel. So I put in some of the original wheels that came with my Rivendell uh, in the back. In the front, I thought I would mix it up and really show off what this bike was about. So I went disc brake in the front. I harvested some spires uh, from my Velo Orange spires, everyone's favorite kind of mediocre uh, disc brake. <laughs> and the wheel I also harvested from my polyvalent. I think in some ways this would mimic uh, real life post apocalyptic uh, situations where you're roaming the landscape looking for donor bikes to either fix or build up a bike. The handlebars are a really wide version of the Ritchie Venture Max. My thinking is that since the bike is a little bit on the small side for me uh, to increase the reach, I decided to do that by getting a wider than normal handlebar than I would run. The levers are these really sweet looking uh, gum hood Tektro uh, brake levers. These are road pull, AKA short pull. So that's why they work both with a can lever in the rear and a road disc in the front. 
to top it all off, uh, I'm using a seat post from my Velo Orange as well as a, an old specialized saddle I had laying around. And I thought this would be the perfect bike to test out the Tim Taz Rec front bag support. So that's what this kind of contraption is. For tires, these are the Tearvel Washburns. They have more of a smoothish tread. So for, you know, pavement and kind of hard pack riding, a pretty good tire in my opinion. Nothing super fancy, just basic and solid. Okay, so the end result is a bike only a bike nerd who grew up in bike co-ops will love. If you're super anal, all modern, everything, this will probably drive you up the wall. I love it. It's a postmodern uh, pastiche or mishmash of retro and new parts. Kind of a functional bike assemblage, if you will. In some ways, it's the perfect apocalypse bike. When we're deep in the end times and scavenging for bike parts, uh, a bike like this will still keep you rolling. If you want to see how this bike rides and how these parts work together, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this content on the weird, funky, non-competitive side of cycling, stop by the merch store, pick up some stickers. We've got some new, new Save the Front Derailleur stickers and shirts, as well as some Party Page shirts. So as always, keep the supple side down.